Hey friends, I'm so happy you're here in my studio with me. This video is going to be a follow-up video to the birch tree painting tips video that I did. It, it looks like this. Get a little closer maybe. So this one was done with a palette knife and this one was done with a brush. I talk a little bit about atmospheric perspective. If you want um, something to go back in the distance, make it smaller and lighter, those kinds of tips. And it was inspired by this palette knife painting I did called Straight and Narrow. So, and it was done with just Prussian blue and Hooker's green. Get a little closer so you can see the palette knife texture. And then uh, I got a comment that someone wanted me to do a full painting and a traceable. So yesterday I painted the background so it could dry overnight on an 8x8 Michaels canvas. And it, I've got the video so it'll show up after this intro. Isn't that pretty? I think that's really pretty. Just simple. We want it uh, dark enough to put the palette knife or actually I'm going to do brush, I said, the brush, birch trees on top. And actually I still don't know if they're birch trees or aspen trees. And then here's the traceable I have, it's up on my website. So it'll be a fun, simple, relaxing uh, painting and you can certainly draw, you don't have to use a traceable, you can just draw right onto your canvas and it'll be super fun. Let's get started. Let's take a look at what I'm thinking. Um, I'm videoing this before I'm going to video the intro and the rest of the painting tomorrow so that it can dry overnight and then I can use the traceable without the risk of when I scribble chalk or charcoal or whatever on the back, the risk of it sticking to a not, not very dry painting. I dry it with a hair dryer but it's really humid today in summertime here in Omaha, Nebraska. And I just think it might be smarter for me to paint this part first. Okay, and so I measured up two and a half inches. That's the same distance as this horizon line in the traceable. And I'm gonna tape, you don't have to tape. But I'm gonna tape. Tape just to make it a little easier to keep it straight. Uh, this is artist tape. I got it at Michael's. Um, this is a canvas board from Michael's. Gosh, I don't know what they, I don't remember the price anymore. They're really inexpensive. They're sturdy. They're easy to paint on. So you don't have to do this, but I fold it over to make a little tab and then I, it just makes it easier to grab when I want to take it off. See, so then there's already a little, little grab tab. That's just being, <laughs> it's probably being a little weird. And then my colors, I don't exactly know. This is raw sienna. And I'm thinking I'm gonna paint a little dirt and then mix some sort of greens in there. Um, you can do whatever sort of ground sky combination you want to or just all sky. I've got um, quite a few simple landscape painting, quite a few simple landscape video paintings now on YouTube that you can check out. And then I have Thalo Blue Green Shade, Hooker's Green Deep Hue Permanent. I never read that whole name. I usually just say Hooker's Green. Uh, neutral Gray Five, and then. Titanium white. So what I'm going to do in a time lapse is paint a blue sky, paint some grass, and then put in, oh, probably hints of clouds, subtle clouds. Um, but we definitely want the trees to stand out more. Okay, is there anything else I need to tell you? I think that's it. I'll be back in a bit, guys.
Let's get a screenshot. So what's bugging me right now is how dark this is, but we want to put birch trees on top of it. Um, and we can always lighten it after we see how it works. Um, I really ended up liking the green I made with the sky color and the raw sienna. I really like it. And actually I didn't use that, but it's a little bit bluer green. Whoop. <laughs> I missed my palette and it's running. Sop some of that up. And I barely used any of the hooker's green. Just a pinch in the corners. You really don't see it. What else do I wanted to tell you? Oh, and I, um, I've mentioned this in some of my simple landscape painting videos, sky painting videos, I mixed a little of the straight up raw sienna with some white and some matte medium. Uh, you can use gloss medium. You can use water. Uh, it's easier to use the matte medium in my opinion because the water can get kind of thin and then the paint can kind of, um, what's the word I want to use? It can kind of break down. Uh, this is straight up acrylic paint with no pigment, I think. I should uh, ask Liquid Text if that's how they describe it. And then I glazed some of that straight up raw sienna and white over the clouds. Um, but it, since it's transparent, it picks up some of the blue gray cloud underpainting. Oh, and then I, I, as I came down, I added some gray and white. And then I put in some clouds, put in, oh geez, look at how <laughs> dirty my fingers are. I put in some darker areas and really, I'm hoping it's not too busy because we want all this to be pushed back and then the trees are going to be really forward. But I think that looks pretty. Of course, use whatever colors you like. I repeat that. I hope it's not too annoying, but people um, in the beginning acrylic painting groups I'm in sometimes want to buy, you know, everything that the artists use and you can mix your colors. You can make just a pretty painting with, with what you have. Oh, and I didn't mention, I've been using this brush a lot lately, a uh, three quarter inch Royal Lang Nickel. Uh, I think it's their Zen line. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I uh, will shoot the intro tomorrow. So if you notice my clothes change, the intro clothes will be in the next section after this section too. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Let's talk about a few things here. I hadn't really talked about how I painted this. Um, maybe I did. Because <laughs> I filmed the background first. Actually, I think I did. Um, I used, so I already had some blue on there, so I ended up using uh, water and titanium white instead of uh, matte medium to get the subtle clouds. I'm gonna put out some more titanium white. Um, I used chalk pastel to scribble on the back of my traceable. You can use graphite. I'm just not a fan of graphite because it won't melt, melt. It won't dissolve when you get it wet. Whereas the chalk pastel will, uh, watercolor pencil will. Uh, you can get Saral paper, S-A-R-A-L, transfer paper. I don't have any here in the studio, but I know a lot of artists use that. Um, charcoal. This is a charcoal pencil or charcoal sticks. Um, what else do I need to say? I like lightening it with a lightening the 
the black lines with a kneaded eraser. So because we're going to, especially since we're going to do white birch or aspen trees, please let me know if you know which ones these are or it doesn't matter because <laughs> I don't know. Um, so there's less to dissolve into the white paint. You know, it could muddy your paint. Um, what else? I think I'm going to paint. So we're going to make some light, mostly gray, maybe blue gray and just kind of mark out where my trees are because it might get confusing. So I'm just gonna, gonna quickly paint those in. I don't know if there's anything else. Please, please ask a question in the comments or leave a comment um, if I forget to mention something. I don't know that I'm gonna use all that hooker's green I put out. I really ended up liking that muted green I made with the raw sienna and my muted blue. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Hey, quick tip. So since this tree is behind this bigger tree, I just grabbed a little gray so I can see it. We'll tweak it and refine it. Oh, and I've got a light bulb I think that's going out. I don't know if you can see the light flickering. Hopefully you can't in the video. So it's really subtle. And then I just cleaned off my brush and put a little bit of it up here and you don't need to worry about brush stroke direction right now I'm just getting some paint down uh, to cover up cover up the background cover up my traceable lines just to get a layer of paint on it and then you also might want to um, I don't know if you'll put maybe just a couple coats I was gonna say a heavy Put your paint a little heavier over where it crosses horizon line. But I think a couple coats would be maybe smarter and smoother if you like that. I don't know if you can see it. You can kind of see. Well, maybe not. It covers pretty well because there's white in it. Okay, I'm going to go back to filling in my trees just so I know where they are. Let's get a screenshot. So I'll hold it a little closer. I'm trying to see the top of my phone to see if it's square. Hopefully you guys get a, a decent one. Um, so I put in a little gray to define the edge of that tree so I, I can see it. I grabbed a little white um, even though it's not white white because it blends you know with what what's in my paintbrush just so I can see that this tree comes in front of that one and then if you th oh this is a 12 a number 12 Royal Lane nickel uh, it's their Zen line it's a shader I believe the tag set that I had on it said it was a shader and you know I wiggled I'm, I'm not that steady but that's okay trees wiggle and then here my trees got a little close together so I could either come back with some of my green and fix it or just not worry about it. So I think I'm going to let this dry just because I want to go eat some dinner and I'll be back. I thought of a couple things I didn't mention. So I'm going to keep mixing blue grays, mostly gray for the birch trees and I'm going to save my whites for last. I may not do it but that's the game plan. I'm going to have these be less contrasty and push them um, hopefully a little bit more into the distance. I like that this is kind of a bullseye that helps pull your eye in, so I may tone this down a little bit. Oh, and I wanted to, to mention I really like these canvas panels because you can frame them. This is Oscar the Cat. There's a traceable. It's actually in a shallow shadow box frame. Let's see if you can see. You can see it's about an inch or so deep. So that's really fun. It makes it look just so much nicer and finished when you pop them in a frame. I thought you guys might like to see that. Okay, definitely coming back after dinner, guys.
Hey, let's take another look. So I put some gray on this side and some light gray on this side. And there's, it's here, let me get a screenshot there. It's starting to take shape. Um, I'm looking at this and I like it that's darker up here, but I think I want it lighter here because this is really light. And then I'm going to for sure put white on these two big trees and then work. I don't know if I'll put white, white on these. I, yeah, I think I might, but I won't put as dark of darks on it to help it look further away. So I let's do a little matte medium. You could use uh, you could use straight up titanium white, which is on my palette. Um, I think transparent mixing white or zinc white is easier just to slightly lighten up. Or that was kind of loud. I hope that wasn't I put a little matte medium on my palette. I'll grab some it would be easier if I used a bigger palette but this shows up with my setup you can see it and mostly I do it because I can put them in the t uh, gallon baggies and you know I miss my paints I put a lid on top of it or a lid I put another plate on top of it so it's like a little terrarium and then I stick them in the gallon baggie and that helps keep your paints. It won't keep forever, but it'll keep for a couple weeks for sure. Well, when I say for sure, it does depend on the climate in your area. Time of year. Okay. So the matte medium, it has the acrylic medium in it, but it doesn't have any pigment, any of the, the white pigment in it. Oh, and then I was going to use uh, number 12. Oh, it's probably a half inch. Oh, no. Okay, so that's narrower. And this is a 12 Royal Lang Nickel in the Menta line. And this is a 12 shader in the Zen line. But they're different. I don't know how they number brushes or what the reasoning is behind it. If somebody knows, please leave in the comments. And it, it, it changes per brand, too. So I'm grabbing a little bit of water because my brush was dry. Also, it'll thin it out. Alright, so I definitely want it lighter. So you didn't have to paint the background first like I did. You could paint it all you could paint the sky around the trees. And I don't know if it needs lightening up. It's kind of just personal preference. I think it's easier to paint the sky when the trees aren't on there. So the reason I smear it with my fingers because I, when I put it down, it looks whiter than I want it, and then it it dries darker, and I end up going back and putting more because <laughs> I just get a little nervous. I don't know. That helped, I think. And I also want to do it now so where it's not going to... Well, we could probably do it later, too. Acrylics are so forgiving. You can pretty much fix anything, I think. If you get it too thick and textured, much texture on there, you could sand it down. and Once it's good and dry and start again. Okay, that I kind of want it to. 
maybe we'll just leave that. That might dry dark too, darker. I'm glad that some of those wispies are showing. Put a few more in there. light enough I think in every I've got a series of simple landscape paintings um, up on YouTube and I think in every one of them I have lightened it down here at the horizon I mean everybody has their thing that they like or don't like and I think I've done it in every painting it's kind of funny like that so then we get we get a little bit like okay we come into the painting um, if you read left or right because I don't really have anything pointing you in but this is kind of this is a bullseye because it's really bright here I'll probably put a black area here too to really grab your attention and then you kind of go like this and then you go like this and then you could it's not very strong but you could so we've got a little bit of a Z zigzag going which I like Okay, back to more layers on our tree. Oh, I was gonna, um, I was gonna, maybe I'll take a little of that matte medium. Nope, that dried on me. Let's just take a little of the matte medium and a little bit of our green. And this is getting picky. I don't think that's actually a problem. I'm just gonna, Knock it back just a smidge there. Okay, I'm gonna work on more layers on the trees. Be back in a bit, guys. I ran into a little hiccup so I was trying to put some darker gray right here and it wasn't dry enough so it was pulling up the paint underneath so I'm just gonna let it dry and plus I've got two bullseyes they're both about the same shape and size so I'll let it dry and then I'll go back and fix it it happens to everybody
All right, I went back on what I said I was gonna do. I was painting this with a brush and I just like, once you get a couple layers on there and you get a little paint on the bottom of your palette knife, I like the little skips and textures I can get. To me, it looks more like a birch tree. Um, it's, of course, I mean, I see this a lot, but it's because people comment, you know, it's totally up to what you like to do. I'm just showing you one idea. Um, of course, yours won't turn out like mine, just like your signature doesn't look like mine. And then I used um, blue and just a little raw sienna to make a really dark green. It looks almost black in, in places, which I like. And you could just use Mars black or whatever black you have. Okay, I'm gonna go back to painting. Oh, you guys, I have been painting away thinking it was videoing the whole time and my phone shut off. <laughs> um, it's, it's not funny. I shouldn't laugh. I'm hoping that you can still get something out of this video. So what I've been doing is painting with a palette knife, um, mixing some blue grays, really dark bluish green. Um, adding some gray to it, some white to it, and just making different values. And then I decided to take this warmer green and then added a little bit of raw sienna and more white to make it to warm it up. And then I've been putting warmer colors. I feel terrible. I thought it was videoing the whole time. Um, hopefully, I I'm going to post this anyway because you know you still. You can see the final resort, uh, result. Well, it's actually, I don't know if I'm done yet. I'm getting close. And I'm just putting texture on and then texture on. So like this was really dark. And then I ended up putting three or four different colors over it. Because um, it just makes it look more real when you put layers on it. I've said this a bunch of times, but layers are your best friend. <laughs> I am, I am mad. <laughs> I'm so sorry that my phone shut off. Oh, technical difficulties. Let's see. I think I'm going to uh, step away from this since I'm mad and then come back to it in a little bit. what do you think so it's interesting because I've got a brushed background for the most part and palette knife trees so you could say oh the contrast and you know it's the juxtaposition of the two use some arty terms um, do you like it let me know what you think I'm gonna get it closer in case you want a screenshot I ended up putting a lot of layers on those trees um, Let's see, I think I worked on it for about three hours after I ate. 
Gosh, this could be a six hour painting. I always lose track of time. I should write down what time I start and stop. Um, I ended up, I think I mentioned this, I warmed up some spots. Uh, there's no black, it's greens and blues and it's just the colors I had on my palette. What else do I need to tell you? I'm gonna keep my palette, I'll uh, mist it, put it in that uh, gallon Ziploc bag and see if there's anything I wanna change tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me this long, this long. sorry about the gap in the, in the time lapse. I thought it was videoing. I really appreciate all your support. Great big happy art hugs and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.